I'd like you all to pinch your clothes. Maybe the jumper you're wearing right now, the jacket, maybe the handbag you brought with you today. And to take a second to think about what you're holding in your hands. You'd be right to think that these are materials, right? That these materials are made of molecules. But have you ever thought about where these molecules come from? So like mine, your clothes are probably a mixture of natural and synthetic fibers, right? And these synthetic fibers are made of molecules that look like this. And these molecules, they're made in factories that look like this. And they're made from this, oil. In fact, two-thirds of the clothing you're wearing today, right now, are made directly from fossil fuels. And 80% of the clothing that you own today will likely end up in landfill within the next five to 10 years. It's for these reasons that the clothing industry is perhaps one of the most polluting industries worldwide right now. It emits almost 10% of all global carbon dioxide emissions. So maybe, maybe like me, you had a bit of a hard week at work this week. And this morning, you took a paracetamol to ease your headache. Or maybe you've been to the dentist and you got an anesthetic. Or maybe you just had too much lunch, right? And you, you had an antacid to help your heartburn. Have you ever stopped to think about where these medicines come from? <laughs> They're all made from oil. In fact, 70% of the top 100 pharmaceuticals on the market today are made directly from fossil fuels. And this fact has fascinated me throughout my career as a chemist, because it turns out our modern-day society has an insatiable thirst for fossil fuels. We need it. We need oil to basically manufacture everything that we use every single day. And you know, it turns out we've been going down this one-way street for the best part of a century now but we've reached a really critical stage in that journey right now. And that is because we use 10 billion tons of this natural resource every single year to make fuel and to make chemicals. And these industrial activities are polluting our planet. They're driving global climate change. And fossil fuels are running out at an alarming rate. It's pretty contested in my field right now, but it's accepted that this is going to happen in a number of years that has two digits and doesn't have three. And therefore, this is going to be something that happens in the lifetime of our children and our grandchildren. And therefore, if we want to do something about this, we have to start making changes now. Solving this problem cannot wait any longer. So my question for you at TED today is, do our factories have to look like this? What happens if they didn't emit any carbon emissions? What if they no longer relied on fossil fuels at all? What if they were living factories? I'm talking about microorganisms these beautiful, invisible, living beings. They live on your skin, they live in your body, they live in your homes and in your gardens, they live in this room right now. And within all of these environments, they perform amazing feats of chemistry. They're nature's chemical factories. And we've known this for, for the best part of 2,000 years, because we use this microbial chemistry every day to make many of the things that we love, like cheese, soy sauce, and the delicious beverages that I'm sure you're going to partake in very responsibly this evening. <laughs> None of these would be possible if it wasn't for microbial chemistry. And it turns out Saccharomyces is just like us. It loves sugar, except when we feed it sugar, it gives us alcohol and the beautiful aromas in your beer. But what if this is not all that microbes could do for us? What if the pen you're holding right now could be made using a microbe? The clothing you're wearing right now, 
that paracetamol you took this morning, what if it could be made using a living chemical factory? So this is, in essence, what my lab researches at the University of Edinburgh in the area of synthetic biology. Now, synthetic biology is an emerging technology that essentially enables us to program microbes to do new things, to do things they've never had to do before in nature. Rewiring their metabolism a bit like a circuit board so that these microbes no longer make your cheese, they make your handbag. And to do this, we have to reorder their genes. And these genes are made of DNA, the building blocks of the cell. And then what we can do is by doing this, we can change the chemistry of these microorganisms so that they no longer make your soy sauce or your beer. They make something much better. Like this, adipic acid. Now, I would forgive you for not knowing what adipic acid is. But I guarantee that you're all in contact with it right now. Because adipic acid is used to make your clothes. It's used to make nylon. And it's probably one of the most prolific chemicals in the world right now. In fact, we make over 30 billion tons of it every single year, exclusively from fossil fuels, via an industrial process that emits huge amounts of carbon emissions into the, into the atmosphere. In fact, it's been estimated that if we're able to replace this industrial process with a microbial living factory, it would have the same environmental benefits as electrifying every single car in the UK twice over. So this is the question we've been asking ourselves for the last couple of years. Can we make adipic acid from something a little bit more sustainable? The bar's pretty low, right? Something like this. It turns out in nature, there's a polymer called lignin. Now, lignin is a really sustainable material. It's a really strong material that plants use to strengthen themselves as they grow against gravity towards the sun. And lignin is made of this molecule here, guaiacol. And it turns out guaiacol is the perfect chemical to make adipic acid in a microbe. And even better than that, well, it's not good at all, it's terrible, actually. We create 70 million tons of this waste every single year from the paper milling and the agricultural industries. To put that in a bit more context, that's the same as 200 Empire State Buildings worth of waste every single year, or roughly 400,000 homes. That's half the size of Vienna today, every single year, that we simply send to landfill or we incinerate sending that carbon into the atmosphere. What we've managed to do recently is to rewire bacteria so that they now break down guaiacol from lignin waste into adipic acid, no longer in a factory like the ones I showed you earlier, releasing all of these toxic chemicals into the atmosphere, but instead in reactions that look like this. In these living microbial factories in water, at room temperature, releasing no carbon emissions, and critically not using any fossil fuels at all. Now, we're really excited about this discovery because it's the first time that this molecule, this prolific industrial chemical, has been made from this available, abundant, natural resource by a living microbial factory. And I think what this does is it paves the way for the sustainable manufacture of your clothing in the future in a way that's not so destructive to the planet around us, in a way that's far more sustainable, greener, and cleaner. And synthetic biology is amazing, right? Because we can just rewire the circuit board to make adipic acid from something else, right? Something like this, plastic waste. So therefore, imagine being able to take the plastic waste that's currently polluting the ocean and to use that to make your clothing using bacteria. Or to take the millions of tons of plastic waste that's polluting environments world, worldwide right now, maybe to use that as a source of human medicine using bacteria. Now, these are all possibilities that are being developed right now in the field of synthetic biology. And the story doesn't even end there. 
One of the most densely populated microbial habitats on Earth is the human body. We live in close proximity with these microorganisms every single day. In fact, you're in contact with almost 40 trillion of them right now. So therefore, imagine having these living factories living inside you, medicating you only when you need treatment. Or perhaps living inside your clothes, fixing them only when they need repairs. These are all technologies that are possible in the future using synthetic biology and the amazing chemistry of these microscopic living creatures. So altogether, I think, despite what you maybe see in the news every day, this makes me really optimistic about the future. A future where we no longer exploit nature, traveling down this one-way street of spiraling emissions and mountains of waste. But instead, I see synthetic biology being able to take us to much more virtuous circles, perhaps a future where there's no such thing as waste, where we use these living factories that are cleaner, they're greener, and they're powered by processes that nature has been evolving for us for millions of years. Thank you.